If you're preparing for your private pilot checkride, you need to watch this video. While the major news is that the FAA just released the long-awaited ACS for Flight Instructor airplane, the fact is they released a total of 15 new or updated ACS documents, including the private pilot ACS. So stick around as we explore what's changed. Let's start with the timeline. According to the FAA website and the documents themselves, revisions were completed in November of 2023. The updated versions were officially published in April of 2024 and they become effective May 31st of 2024. You can now download them from the FAA and I'll put the link in the description. However, if you want to order a paper copy from Sporties, Amazon, or another source, be careful. In looking online, even those that were listed as the 2024 version were actually not the new version. The new version is FAA-S-ACS-6-Charlie. So what's changed? While the areas of operation and the objectives haven't changed, there are changes to the appendices and the elements of every area of operation except for 5, 10, and 12. While there's no guarantee all of these changes will come up during your checkride, they are still important. Appendix 1 of the ACS notes that an evaluator doesn't need to bring up every knowledge and risk area within a task, but they should bring up any they believe necessary to determine mastery. Therefore, my hope is that you'll use this video as a prompt to sit down with your instructor, walk through all of the ACS changes, and talk about what they might mean for your checkride. One other note. In this video, I'm only discussing what might come up during an ASEL checkride. There are also changes for seaplane operations. Let me know in the comments if you'd like a video about those. Now, let's jump into the ACS. Perhaps the most noticeable update is that a bunch of material formerly found in the appendices has been moved to a separate document. The new document is the Airman Certification Standards Companion Guide for Pilots. It contains helpful information on the knowledge tests, knowledge test reports, abbreviations and acronyms, a checklist for your check ride, and more. I highly recommend downloading or purchasing a copy. Let's walk through the rest of the changes section by section, starting with area of operation number one, pre-flight preparation. Within task B, or air worthiness requirements, they've added specific knowledge areas about owner, operator, and pilot in command responsibilities, and standard and special airworthiness certificates and their associated limitations. Since neither appeared in the 2018 ACS, both are worth reviewing. Task C, weather information, adds knowledge elements that call out specific weather products. The good news is the NOAA's GFA tool is on the list. The bad news is the old weather and temperature loft forecasts are too. So if you use alternate sources for wind, be sure to brush up on those FB forecasts. Task D, cross-country planning, adds long overdue knowledge, risk, and skill elements regarding the use of electronic flight bags. The language indicates you can still plan by hand, but the new elements mean electronic flight planning is officially acceptable. Just be ready to explain where you got your performance numbers and how you can ensure their accuracy. Task E adds a knowledge element regarding special VFR. Well, this isn't new. You've certainly covered it for the knowledge test, but the callout means you should be prepared to discuss it during your check ride. Task H adds a risk element regarding confirmation and expectation bias. This isn't new either. In the 2018 version, confirmation and expectation bias were called out in several places. What is new is that they've been called out in the human factors task. So be prepared for a larger discussion on what these are and the risks associated with them. Area of Operation 2 also has several changes we'll want to take a look at. Task A specifically calls out the need to demonstrate your self-assessment and to continue to assess the environment as your flight goes along. So, make sure your assessments aren't just one and done. Task B has a couple of new elements. There's a new knowledge element regarding securing items and cargo. This is in addition to the existing skill element. There's also a new skill element about ADM and use of SRM and CRM as well as a risk element about managing passenger distractions. These were all implied before, but now they're specifically called out. Task C adds a knowledge element about when and how to abort an engine start. Tasks D and E add risk elements associated to runway incursions as well as confirmation and expectation bias. Based on the increased instances of runway incursions in the last couple of years, these aren't a surprise. With incursions being an FAA focus area, be prepared to discuss them. Area of Operation 3, Airport and Sea Base Operations, adds a significant change. 
Task A now has a risk element regarding the use of non-standard phraseology. This can be a challenge because of the number of professional pilots that use non-standard phraseology. I can't tell you the number of times I've heard, but that professional pilot said it. As noted earlier, there is an added emphasis on runway incursions. Area of Operation 4 continues that trend. However, the most interesting addition is the added risk element of managing a go-around or rejected landing after accepting a land and hold short clearance. Because students aren't allowed to accept land and hold short clearances, this is something you'll definitely want to discuss with your instructor. Area of Operation 6 has several small updates. Task A includes a new risk element on unplanned power and fuel consumption. Task B introduces a risk element regarding the use of electronic flight books for navigation and radar systems. Task C and D add skill elements to remind pilots to select a course of action and then promptly put it into action. All of these except for the electronic flight book were implied before but are now specifically called out. The only modifications to Area of Operation 7 are a focus on SRM and CRM during power on and power off stalls. There are several revisions to Area of Operation 8. Most discuss mitigating the risks of fixation and omission, instrument interpretation, and control application solely by reference to instruments. These aren't new, but rather a rewording of existing risks. One thing I believe is very valuable is the addition of risk elements regarding trimming the aircraft. Pilots should make sure they aren't using trim to fly the airplane, but I'm finding that many private pilot candidates don't use enough trim. Instead, they rely on muscling the aircraft, which often leads to loss of attitude when working radios, riding clearances, or anything else that momentarily takes their attention away from the scan and control manipulation. This element is definitely worth discussion with your instructor. Another valuable change is the increased detail related to unusual attitude recognition and appropriate recovery. But key changes are the added elements regarding returning to VMC and the use of automation to assist when available. These were not called out in previous ACS versions, but the entire purpose of practicing flight by reference to instruments as a private pilot is to prepare for accidental VMC into IMC, and therefore, I believe these additions are crucial. There are several small updates to Area of Operation 9. Task A includes a knowledge area about aircraft performance and limitations, and skill areas about making radio calls and use of SRM or CRM. Task C has new risk areas regarding undesired aircraft state and startle response. But the most notable change is the addition of elements related to airframe parachutes and auto land. If your aircraft has these extra tools, be sure to plan how you're going to respond to questions about them. The changes to Area of Operation 11, Night Operations, are an increased focus on night taxiing, the need to demonstrate relative aircraft position based only on position lights, and visual illusions at night. Further, there were risk elements added regarding runway incursions, night currency versus proficiency, night weather, and inoperative equipment at night. So, there you go. A comprehensive review of the ASEL changes to the ACS guide. While many of the changes are small, there are several that could cause issues if you haven't reviewed or prepared for them. So, grab a copy of the new ACS, schedule time with your instructor, and discuss what these changes might mean for you and your check ride. If this video was helpful, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. Second, please consider sending a tip using Buy Me A Coffee. The link is in the description, and even a small amount helps support these videos. Finally, if you're looking for more flight training information, I would recommend watching this video next. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching. Fly safely, and I will see you next time.